Hey, what's up? Good morning. Welcome to a Sunday edition of Morning Scone presented by Boudreaux. Hope you're all having a great weekend. Whew. You boy got a ton of sun yesterday. I was at like literally at brother-in-law's house out by the pool for like eight hours. <laughs> so uh, Drew got up at about 6.30 this morning, so I'm sure he'll be here in here in a second. So uh, good morning to all of you. Thanks for watching as always. A few things I want to talk about. Of course, LSU uh, having their elite prospect camp this weekend. So uh, commits usually roll in about this time, and it's it's happened. They got another cornerback commit. We'll talk about that. Um, CWS final is set. We'll get some of your questions as well. Carl, good morning. Nick, good morning. Michael, good morning. Hope you all doing well. Get rolling here. Um, the all right. So the LSU got its third commit in 24 hours yesterday. Uh, Shea Dixon was the first to report it. Uh, defensive back, JUCO defensive back. A uh, kid's name is Drashun Miller, Drashun Miller, out of Eastern Arizona College, JUCO. He is the, if you're just looking for the, uh, he's the 16th commit for the class. As far as JUCO goes, he is the um, the number three junior college cornerback and the number nine overall player, JUCO player in the country for 2019. So uh, yesterday they added a, uh, also added a JUCO tight end. And then uh, they added uh, Peter Parrish, the quarterback, on Friday as well. So uh, Ed Ogeron and his staff getting busy right now, cruising through this 2019 class. They're at 16 commits, so we'll talk about uh, here in a second uh, what, what Miller's addition means and then you know, the, what the rest of the staff may look like. So, I, of course, they, they were going to sign four cornerbacks in this class, so they got four committed. If there's one thing that I was um, kind of – selfishly hoping for. I was kind of hoping that that fourth cornerback would end up being um, uh, Jordan Clark, who's Ryan Clark's son. Uh, it's always fun to see legacies come through. And, you know, he's a kid from U High, just down the street uh, from LSU. So, actually, it's on LSU's campus. Um, but but I do understand, you know, you go through your scouting process and you identify the guys that you find are, are you know, are the best ones you want and you go get them. So, uh, Derek Stingley, of course, they've already got committed. They got uh, Murray Hampton out of Memphis committed. They got Speedy Banks out of Houston committed, and now um, uh, Drashun Miller out of uh, out of JUCO committed. One of the good things about going after Miller when you go after a JUCO guy is also understanding. So for next year, we've talked about the numbers a bunch with LSU's cornerback spot, right? So you know you're you're you, well, you know you're losing Terrence Alexander, who's a grad transfer. He's got one year left. Greedy's probably the best cornerback in the draft, so he's going to be going early as well. So you hope over the course of this year, you hope. I mean, these are all like what ifs. You hope that Kerry Vincent emerges. You hope that John Trey Kirkland, you know, emerges. You um, you hope you get Christian Fulton back, but even if you do, it's a guy who's played three games in his career. Um, so you, you hope that um, uh, that that uh, uh, doggone, I'm, I'm blanking right now. On uh, the, the <laughs> I'm blanking right now on, on the receiver that they moved. Um, it, I told you it's early and I got fried. It was in the sun all day yesterday. So, um, anyway, I mean, you you hope that uh, that that continues to develop there. So you know, I um, uh, those are a lot of questions. So you add a couple of freshmen and you feel really good about Stingley coming in right away, and um, uh, and and being able to contribute for you. But if you had a JUCO guy. That's a guy who's a little older. It should be able to step in and play for you. So I, I like it. I like going to get a, a more veteran guy. So look, they needed they needed four defensive backs to fortify that position in this class. And uh, Manny Netherly, by the way. Oh my God, how did I just blank on that? I said, dude, my my like, <laughs> and I and here's the other kicker. I go into the the pantry this morning. I wake up. I go to get my coffee. We're, t- we're totally out of coffee. So I'm like, I could have gone and got coffee, come back and done this, but it would have been later than I normally do. So I was like, eh, I'll just do it. So I haven't had my first sip of coffee yet. So that stinks. Uh, Jordan, good morning. Uh, Clay Valentine, good morning. Mike Buchanan, good morning. Continuing DBU. Man, they got to get it back for sure. Um, yeah, I, I still w- wonder about this year. Um, of course, with, with, a, a lot of the, the turnover you've had at, at cornerback and not signing one last year. I mean, you hope Terrence Alexander becomes a dude in the slot. You hope somebody of Vincent Kirkland, of Netherly, whoever it may be, emerges opposite 
uh, or God, if you can get Christian Fulton eligible, it merges opposite greedy. But you know, you, I think you also understand like this. This year could be um, you know, this year you could have some some issues, quite honestly. Uh, but they're, they look like they're fortifying again for t- for 2019 and beyond. So, Chris, good morning. Trivia says, uh, "How's the running backs recruit looking?" Well, uh, let's so let's let's go there a little bit to talk about the the class um, for for 2019. And the reason I, get, I guess part of the reason that I feel like it's important to talk about recruiting earlier now is because of the December signing period. You know, it used to be, you know, February was when you targeted everything, but now all the, I mean, I think LSU had every all but maybe three guys signed. Um, every every guy who had committed early signed in the December period last year. So, I mean, you've got to get this work done before the season starts. And you know, this is the time to do it, of course. So the um, question was about the running back commit. So LSU has Ty- Tyrion Davis uh, committed. He's the number 12 overall player in the state of Louisiana. He's the number one running back in the state of Louisiana. And he kind of fits the mold more of what they had with guys like Fournette and Geis and Hill. 6'1", 230, uh, four-star recruit. So a, uh, a, a big-time you know, ru- big national running back prospect there who's, who's in the state of Louisiana that, you know, man, you had to go get. So I'll give you – hang on, let me give you his running back ranking. He's the, uh, he's the 14th best running back in the country for, uh, for 2019. So LSU's got a running back in the boat. Remember, they signed two last year. So, um, you know, we'll – I don't know that they go for multiple this year, and maybe Davis Davis is enough of of the guy. But you know you're going to lose uh, Brissett to graduation, uh, and you still have you know Leonard Fournette hanging around for another year, and of course you have Clyde Edwards Elaire and the two guys you signed this year. So uh, yeah, Davis to that mix in your running back room, you should have plenty of of numbers. The other thing, so they're at 16 right now for the class of 2019. Here's the other thing. Um, at this point, you've got a running back, you've got your quarterback, you've got your four cornerbacks. So you feel like, at this point in the class for LSU, like the, the absolute must-need you, you probably hit. So now you start to look at, okay, with Louisiana, there being a bumper crop in the state this year, like start to just check boxes on the rest of the big-time players in the state. And if you do that, then, then you're staring down a top-five class nationally. Um, the number three overall prospect in the country, according to, <coughs> excuse me, according to the two four seven composite, is uh, Ish Softser, uh, number one player in Louisiana defensive lineman out of a meet. Uh, he's still uncommitted. Um, you've got John Emery, uh, a, a running back out of Destrehan, uh, who's uncommitted. Um, a Devonte Lee, who is a, a wide receiver out of a meet. Uh, Deontay Starks, an inside linebacker out of Destrehan, uncommitted. Christian Harris, the athlete out of U High, uncommitted. I, I'm sorry, out of Southern. No, it's out of U High. Forgive me. Uh, uncommitted. Trey Palmer out of Kentwood, a wide receiver, uncommitted. Devin Bush, the cornerback out of Carr, uncommitted. Uh, Ray Parker, the offensive lineman out of Ruston, uncommitted. So you know, you go and look at the top twelve players in the state. Three are only three have given commitments, and all have committed to LSU. The other nine are all still uncommitted. So my point is, you know, o, Coach Ogeron can, it, it, he's you know, got nine spots remaining. If man, if he can go and and fortify the rest of this class with the top players in Louisiana, especially soft out of a meet, then you're all, you're looking at a, a top, you know, you're looking at, at, at a top five class in the country. So that's what we've talked about before, man. It's kind of getting momentum rolling for this program again. It feels like with this recruiting class, uh, they're kind of getting that done. So. All right, let's get the. We'll talk about the CWS final. My, by the way, if you're watching on on right here live, um, Mary, it's my aunt Mary. They're Arkansas people, so she's fired up right now. I'm sure about the about the uh, about the Hogs being in the CWS final. They'll have their uh, their work cut out for them. We'll talk about that in a second. Someone else just mentioned that the margarita mix looks legit. It is legit. Boudreaux's, you can check it out. Check them out on all their social media. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Please follow them. It's easy as it says on the label. Just shake, pour, and drink. Now you do have to add your alcohol to it. But um, it's it's good stuff. I've not had the Bloody Mary mix. I'm not really a Bloody Mary drinker. But the margarita mix, I can tell you, I really enjoy. I don't like things that are way too sweet or tart. It makes my head sweat. This is just perfect. Um, and the thing that I do like about this a bunch is if you're making Bloody Marys, 
you don't have to en empty out your whole pantry. As you can, I don't know if you can be able to see it in this video. I'm trying to look, but you can see all of the ingredients. If you can see in the bottle there, all the specs. So everything you'd want is in there. So you don't have to go empty out your whole pantry to make a, a, a Bloody Mary. Just go ahead and pour that, add your vodka, and you're good to go. So if you're brunching it this Sunday, check out our friends at Boudreaux's. Um, let's see a couple of questions. Bryce says, uh, any news on Jacoby Stevens? Might he play cornerback this year? I don't think Jacoby's a candidate to play corner. I think he got, um, I think he got on campus. Uh, they were hopeful for him, you know, high, high you know, five-star recruit, and they were just more impressed with Delpit and Harris, uh, quite honestly. And so he was a kid who wanted to play. He's got really good athleticism. He played offense in high school. That's why they tried him at receiver. It, it didn't really come. They had so many numbers at receiver, so they moved him back. I, my guess is he sticks there, but again, that's just a guess. Dale says, when will we know the Christian Fulton verdict? It, the verdict's done, Dale. The, what we're waiting to see is, is if you know, that piece Ross Dellinger did was just a, 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 an exploratory piece, you know, it's sort of a feature piece, but it wasn't you know, reporting that there was you know, much new. It's um, you know, the, essentially the NCAA has to has to reopen the case. I mean, it's they've they've handed down their their punishment, the two year punishment. They've heard the appeal, they've denied it. So you know, the the Fultons have retained an attorney to try to fight the NCAA and, and get eligible again, but. Um, that's 100% on the NCAA to say, okay, we'll reopen the case and consider this new evidence. But as of now, they haven't. So there's you know, there's nothing to suggest they would as of now. So well, we'll keep our eye on that. Uh, let's see if I can get any more of your questions here before we move on talk a little CWS. Craig said, let's see, championship series is more appealing to Oregon State. Also, would Coach O ever... Oh, appeal, I get it. Also, would Coach O ever offer above the available 2019 spots like Saban does. Okay, you can't you can't do that anymore um, unless if you backfill a class. So like you can only sign a max of 25 unless if you undersign from a previous class and you have that spot available where you can backfill. So like it, it's not like when you know that year when Houston Nut signed 36 guys at Ole Miss. Like you just you can't do it anymore. So uh, and LSU that I'm aware of doesn't have spots to backfill because they filled with their their grad transfers this year with um, um, uh, with Burrow and then obviously with Terrence Alexander. So the two spots they had they backfill they backfilled. So they're they're done for 18. So they don't have extra spots. So they can only sign uh, 25 this year as well. Um, Mike, where do you think this class could potentially be ranked? If they get Ish Softer and finish as strong as they should, I mean, I think they'll be top five. I, I don't, I don't know, um, you know, what what it takes to jump up higher than that, but probably top five. Um, look at Mike D joining. Mike Detilia. Good morning, man. Randy Whitehead. Good morning, Patrick. Good morning, Derek. Good morning. Appreciate y'all for watching. Ben Clark. Good morning as well. So a couple of things we'll get to here, and then I'll ask more. Uh, <laughs> I get to more of your Q and A. Um, so Oregon State uh, beat Mississippi State last night. So back-to-back -back nights, Oregon State beats Mississippi State last night. It was a five-two win. Uh, it's unfortunate for Mississippi State. They were kind of they were a feel-good story, and kind of pulling for them. But realistically, like we talked about, like I hate to say it this way because it sounds crass, but State wasn't a good team this year. Like it, they've had way better teams get to Omaha and not win it than this one. Uh, this was a team that. That's that got hot at the right time and went on a, a fun run. They got behind their rally banana and all that stuff. But realistically, they had Connor Pilkington and Evan Small, and not much after that, with with way of, of pitching and certainly starting pitching. And they ran into a great team. You know, I mean, they, c congrats to Mississippi State for getting into the winners bracket, man. But they ran into a great team in Oregon State, who um, who's a, a juggernaut. And LSU got to see that firsthand. They hit one through nine. And it's a rarity that if you get in the loser's bracket in Omaha that you can hit your way out of it, especially at TD Ameritrade with the new bats. But you know, Oregon State did that. You know, they blasted. Uh, they they were down. We forget, like, Oregon State was down 6-3 to three in the eighth inning of an elimination game against North Carolina. And they came back and, and, and rolled in the final two innings. Hey, baby. Uh. What? Uh. So Drew's here. Uh. Big block. Elevator. He likes to go to the mall and ride the elevator. Mom. He likes the glass elevator. Mama? Mama. Maybe, no, Mama's not here today. Mama. 
Okay, bye bye. Go watch Mickey Mouse. Okay, go watch Mickey. We'll see you later. Okay, see you later. He's in a good mood this morning. Um, so anyway, uh, so you know, Oregon State uh, hit hit their way out of a six three elimination game in the eighth inning against North Carolina. They blasted State on on Friday twelve to two, and then they won last night five to two behind a, an awesome pitching performance from a young guy making his first start. So, you know, good, congrats to them. I I think I think Florida when they were playing their best, was the best team in the country. Oregon State looks like the best team in the country right now, but Arkansas is playing awesome too. And the good news for Arkansas is they got their pitching rotation set up where you, know, you can go you can go Blaine Knight and you can go Casey Murphy games one and two. And, and Isaiah Campbell, if they can bring him back, let's say it gets to a Wednesday and they want to bring him back on, let's see, pitched Friday bring him back on four days rest. They could do that if they needed him. Um, so Arkansas's pitching sets up good. They hit the baseball. I mean, it said it all year. If the College World Series was played at Bomb Stadium this year, I'd, I'd have picked Arkansas to win the national title. Just they were so they were so hit and miss away from home this year. It was a lot like LSU, but they were dominant. They were like 30-3 and three at home in the regular season. And I don't think they won a road conference series all year. Uh so it was a weird, weird year for Arkansas, man. But when they're playing great, as you can see right now, they're an awesome team. So um, I don't know who to pull for, man. It's so hard to like. I don't. I, I'm not the guy that pulls for the SEC. I, I don't think that it's good for the teams in, in your conference, your division, to go win national titles. You don't get that feather in their cap. The flip side of it is, there's nothing likable about Oregon State, man. Like I can't, I can't, I can't go cheer for Oregon State in this thing, man. Especially after they beat LSU. I hate. I mean, I hate. Uh, uh, I hate the story about Luke Heimlich and all. Anyway, but it's just, um, I, I hell, I guess I'll pull for Arkansas. Man, I got family in Arkansas. I, got, I mean, I guess by by default. Uh, Mike D, great job, Matt. Big shout out from the man again. What's up, Mike D? Y'all there already? I need to figure out how to uh, how to um, like how to conference you in. I got to put you on this thing with me right now, man. We talk about the man again. I'd love to know what's going on down there. So. Um, I saw uh, Alex Hornerbrook from uh, from Wisconsin won the, uh, the 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 Manning Camp uh, competition. So good on you! All right, y'all. Let's see. I'm about to bounce out of here. Like I said, I've not had coffee yet this morning. Uh, we're out of it in this house. I need to go buy some coffee. Uh, meanwhile, go buy Boudreaux's mix, the Bloody Mary mix, the Margarita mix. If you're partying, party responsibly. But uh, support great local companies. They're uh, uh, founded down in Houma, Louisiana. Uh, a Darren, awesome guy who started the company. You can find it at Canadas down in Homa. If you're in the greater Baton Rouge area, at uh, Mid City Wine and Craft, and Alexander's, Calvin's, and Calandro's. Uh, and then check them out on all their social media as well. Support great local companies, especially this one, because they support Morning Scope. All right, that's going to wrap it up for me. Y'all have a great day. Let's wait, hang on a couple, a couple more comments before I run. Um, sorry, can I pull for another SEC team? I agree. Don't want a recruiting advantage against LSU. I, I agree with you, Craig. Uh, Val says, how do you run out of coffee in South Louisiana? So it's easy, Val. We were, it's not easy. I shouldn't say that. We were low, and then we were out of town in North Carolina for five days. And then we got back, and we were, we, so we missed the day that we would have gone to the grocery and recycle, and it just fell through the cracks. But I'm with you. I'm going to buy coffee, like, right now. Coffee, some breakfast. Uh, we'll have coffee. We'll talk. No big whoop. All right. Uh, Scott, uh, Scott Bork just comes in. I'm late. Scott, no worries. After I fire this thing down, go back to the beginning and rewatch it. In the meantime, uh, y'all do us a solid. Hit the share. Hit the likes. Hit the hearts. All that stuff there at the bottom. That helps us a bunch. So uh, in the meantime, we'll see y'all tomorrow for Morning Scone. Y'all have a great Sunday with family and friends. And we'll see you tomorrow.